Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Cami Page Boutique. I'm Brooke Tannehill and today I wanted to show you how I apply a full water slide wrap with vertical stripes for a custom tumbler. I had no idea how much I liked the cowhide pattern until this cup and who knew it would be such a great neutral. As always, all the products I use will be listed in the description below and you may even find a coupon code or two that saves you some coin. Also, come join our exclusive Facebook group where you can take advantage of upcoming freebies and giveaways that you aren't going to want to miss. So without further hesitation, let's go ahead and get started. For this cup, I started with a fully prepped and sanded 30 ounce straight skinny from Parrish Tumblers, spray painted it white, let it dry, and now I'm using my heat gun to heat the surface of the cup. Why this is important is when you're using lighter glitters, they have a tendency to show any strickiness that might have occurred when you applied your epoxy to the cup. So by heating the cup, it goes on a lot smoother and you get a lot more even coverage. While I alluded to this in the previous instructions, we are going to be applying the glitter using the epoxy method. So I mix up 10 milliliters of epoxy just to make sure that the part A and part B are thoroughly mixed throughout and I apply it to the cup that was just heated with the heat gun. What I'm doing is I'm really making sure that everything is applied evenly so you don't have any streakiness that you see with the lighter glitter colors since we are going to be using a white glitter for this cup. After I applied my epoxy, I let it sit for like one to two minutes and this just allows the epoxy to even out and get rid of any like kind of highs and lows with the epoxy. And then I grabbed Angel Dust from Bougie Glitter Boutique and I absolutely love this white glitter. I hope it captures in per like on video just how beautiful it is in person, but I'm just absolutely obsessed with this white glitter. But all I'm doing is just taking my time, even though you don't really have to, but just covering the entire cup with this white glitter and making sure that all the spots are covered because since we will be doing a full water slide wrap, we wanna make sure that we have great coverage because you will be able to see if you have any bare spots or if you have any pooling um, because you put little too much epoxy on which it happens it doesn't matter just come in with more glitter over the top so just make sure that you have a very nice even coat throughout the entire cup don't forget your bottom and it will set you up for success as we move into the next steps after it was good and covered, I let that dry for about four hours. Then I did two coats of epoxy to make sure we had a nice smooth surface for the water slide. And just like that with movie magic, here is our water slide ready to apply to the cup. So this cowhide is from Creative Fabrica. I will definitely link it down in the description below. But what I'm doing here is I'm cutting off any of the white excess that we don't want on the cup. Now, I will tell you that I printed this out on Hippo water slide paper. I will link it below. And I sealed it three separate times with the Krylon triple thick clear gloss paint. So let it dry for about 20 25 minutes between coats make sure you coat it very well three different times size it to your cup so make sure you're doing the measurements and then I just got a cookie sheet over there um, to the side of the cup and I just got some warm water for the water slide to go into made sure I had the cup was nice and wet and then I applied the water slide over the entire cup so you wanna take your time with this, make sure not to pull on the cup or the print too much, but I highly recommend doing this on the turner so that you can turn the cup and just let it gently pull the water slide paper off the backing to get a nice, smooth, even coat around the entire cup. So you can see just how nicely that just kind of came off the paper and I was able to get it applied pretty easily. Once it's off the backing, I take my silicone brush and I really make sure to take my time and push out any excess water that could be under the water slide. This is super important because if you have excess water or bubbles, you are going to be able to see them. And since we really aren't putting any other design elements over the top, you want to make sure to get those out. Once the bubbles and the water are all out, I make sure to grab a super sharp, and I mean like a brand new blade for this. And I have tried it both when the water slide is still wet and when the water slide is dry. And I think I prefer it when it's dry because it's just a little easier to cut and I don't have as many problems with like the water slide tearing. So do what works for you. Here I am cutting it wet, but I did have a couple of issues with the water slide tearing, but do whatever works best for you. 
I did want to show you how it went when I did cut the water slide dry. So I'm just using the exacto knife in a straight up and down manner and is going around the inside of the cup and removing any of the dried water slide. It worked pretty well, but after I had this all trimmed up, I went into a coat of epoxy and made sure that the water slide was good and dry before I did that coat of epoxy because it's going to make a nice smooth surface for our next steps. I did the next portion of this cup during a live, so I'm sorry I'm like standing out, just like hovering over the top of the cup. But we're going to get the three stripes that you saw from the finished product by using painter's tape. If you don't know by now, painter's tape and I have a super strong love-hate relationship, but I just think it's the best way to get nice crisp lines when you're doing a design like this. So this is a three quarter inch blue tape. You can get it at any hardware store or Walmart. And what I did first was I laid down the middle part of the stripes, which is just like the middle piece of painter's tape. And then I came in and I applied the other two stripes to the side of that. Now, we're actually going to lay down five pieces of tape, even though we only have three stripes, because we wanna make sure that the outer stripe has a nice crisp edge, so the additional piece of painter's tape helps us to achieve that. So start with the centermost piece of tape or the centermost stripe, and then work your way out from there, and then you should have five pieces of painter's tape total, which I'm showing you during this life. Now, we will be using the devil's glue to apply our stripes, but when I do that, I like to use a combination of Mod Podge and acrylic paint because I feel like with the addition of the acrylic paint, it just gives you that little bit longer work time than if you were just to use straight Mod Podge, which is important when you're working in bigger areas than this. So you can kind of see me mixing it there on my plate. I just do half Mod Podge to half acrylic paint. And I think it's super important when you're working with these straight edges like this that you have a straight edge brush this is probably a three quarters of an inch brush it's nothing spectacular I just got it from Michaels and I think it helps to really get into those straight lines and keep them as crisp as possible just so you're more successful when you're applying your glitter one thing I do want to call out is since I'm using all three pinks so they're all in the same color family I did just use one color acrylic paints but if you chose to use different color combinations you probably do want to mix it up to where you have the right acrylic paint with your glitter color so you don't get any wonky discoloration. So I removed the centermost stripe or the centermost piece of painter's tape. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in with the glitter, not the glitter, the acrylic paint and Mod Podge mix and paint on that first glitter. So I chose Bubblegum from Bougie Glitter Boutique. And one thing I forgot to do, which I think is super important, is I didn't bring my stripes all the way to the bottom because I wanted to have a nice um, clean, vinyl line a go around the bottom so for that I would recommend having a straight piece of painter's top as your stopping point for your stripes I did not do that and I had to kind of come in and touch up but I would recommend doing that if you decide to end your stripes evenly with your water slide but can you see how beautiful it is and all you do is just apply the glitter over the top of the Mod Podge acrylic paint and you've got an awesome stripe. Now I'm definitely talking in between the stripes and I'm doing that on purpose and I know this is during a live but because you do want to give it just a couple of minutes to dry before you move into the other stripe colors. So just take your time, be a little bit patient. You could even apply these stripes with the epoxy method if you wanted to but I just did it with the Mod Podge acrylic paint because I was on a live but epoxy would work just as well so we let that middle stripe dry a little bit and all I'm doing is taking that flat brush again and coming up right next to that bubble gum glitter stripe and applying the adhesive mix whatever you want to call it but here you can really see why that straight brush matters. So I'm just taking my time applying the adhesive mix and making sure that I have nice even coverage for the next glitter that we're going to apply. Now this is Hot Mama from Bougie Glitter Boutique and I think this is a wonderful pink because it's a deeper pink but it still kind of gives you some of those neon vibes. So it's super beautiful. Highly recommend you check it out. But I am just applying that right next to the bubble glum glitter that we laid down first, trying to make sure that 
I'm not getting any cross contamination. So paying pretty close attention to not get any glitter over that other pink color so that you don't have any of the kind of glitters mixing and melding and not giving you those nice crisp lines. Now you've seen me do this in previous tutorials, but I also think it's important to have a nice dry brush around just to kind of knock off any extra glitter that might be strays because again, we want to prevent contamination at all costs. So all I'm doing here is continuing what I did with the other two stripes on the third section and I'm just making sure that I have nice even coverage and I'm getting that adhesive as close to the other stripe as possible but also preventing any of the extra glue from getting on top of it so that you have the wrong glitter color sticking where it shouldn't be. After I've got that good and applied, I come in with Baby Blush, again from Bougie Glitter Boutique. And I thought that this was the perfect addition to the other two pinks that we used because it's the lighter, softer of the three, but I think it still plays well with the other two colors. So just making sure I'm taking my time, not getting any of that lighter pink into the middle, and you can see that the three stripes are done. Then you want to make sure to pull the tape just because you don't want any of that extra adhesive sticking to it and possibly pulling up your glitter. And then I came in with just like a little bit extra glitter just to make sure that that line of where the tape intersected with the glitter is covered. And I think it added a really nice detail. And I love those three colors together with the cowhide. I let those dry for a couple of hours and then I sealed them twice with Rosolium gloss spray paint. And now I'm showing you how you apply a second coat of glitter if you want to. This step is optional. I just wanted a little better coverage so all I'm doing is I'm following the steps that we did before with the stripes just this time I'm not ex like covering up all the glitter I'm starting with the two side stripes because it's just easier when I've already got the other ones laid down like we have the previous color laid down and I can use them as a better guide so since I sealed this you do not have to worry about the glitter coming off but if you want to reduce a little bit of the tackiness before you lay it over the glitter you can apply the tape to your paint like to your shirt and and it just makes it a little less sticky, but I've never had an issue. And like I mentioned before, here I am taping off the bottom of my stripes so that I have that nice guide for where my water slide stops and we forgot to, or I forgot to do it in the previous steps, but I wanted to show it here. For the second layer of glitter, we are just going to be using straight Mod Podge and the same flat brush. And the reason why we're just using straight Mod Podge is because we don't want to apply any acrylic paint over the beautiful glitter layer that we've already laid down. So since Mod Podge dries clear, it works perfectly for the second layer. So although it does not look like it, I am taking my time making sure I have a nice even coat of the Mod Podge before I come in and apply the glitter. The reason why you want as even of a coat as possible is because especially if you are using a finer cut glitter, you will be able to see the different ridges and inconsistencies of the Mod Podge. So just take your time and get a nice, nice even coat before you apply your glitter. So here again is that baby blush and I just love this glitter color. It's so beautiful. It's an it's a mix and I don't know what's in it, but it just got such a brilliant sparkle that I love. Then once I got that applied, you are going to want to pull the tape as soon as possible on the outside because we are applying the second stripe like this, but just to make sure you don't have any unnecessary lifting when you pull the tape. So same thing with the hot mama stripe. You're just going to take the Mod Podge, make sure you're getting a nice even coat and apply the glitter over the Mod Podge just directly onto the cup. So. I love me these flat paintbrushes. I feel like it makes it so easy and I think it gives me a little bit better coverage than if I were to use more of a rounded tip or a slanted tip that you see some other times in other paintbrushes. But look at that amazing coverage and because we made sure to get as even possible, we don't have any unnecessary ridges. Last but not least, I let the other two stripes fully dry for a couple of hours, sealed them again with clear spray paint, and now we're doing the final layer. You want to make sure that the clear spray paint is dry before you go into this step, but we're just doing the same thing that we did with the other ones, just using clear spray paint, making sure we have as even of a coat as possible, and then applying the bubble gum over the top of the Mod Podge. Now, when you choose your glitter colors, if you decide not to use the same colors that I do, please use at least a medium cut glitter, which is usually like a 0.015 or something like that. Just use a medium cut because it's going to be more forgiving. I let that dry for about an hour, spray sealed it, then moved into a coat of epoxy just to make sure that I got it nice and smooth. And now it's time to apply our pinstriping. So I am using the textured silver vinyl from Cricut. 
Um, I have to tell you, after this design, I have a love-hate relationship with it, but I think it added a lot of depth to this cup. So I cut it using the um, square tool in Cricut Design Space. You just add a square to your kind of your artboard or whatever you want to call it. Unclick the lock button so that you're not constrained to the proportions. Then I cut these stripes at 0.175 wide by 11 inches long and you can see that it just gave me the perfect width to really add some detail to this cup but not too thick to take away from it so i just made sure to add them vertically between the stripes splitting the difference where the glitters met and then same thing with where the water slide met and then after i applied the straight lines i did decide to go around the bottom of the cup where the water slide ended and the white glitter seems to appear even though it's completely covered um, around the entire cup and I just applied this pen striping and it was pretty tough because with the cowhide um, there wasn't a reference point to make sure it was straight but it came out wonderfully and I love the way that these little added details look. One thing I want to mention is any time I had two pieces of the vinyl overlapping, I did use a very sharp X-Acto knife to make sure that I cut any of that off because you, when you have the two layers of vinyl, it can cause some pokey bits, so just wanted to remove it. After this, I sealed it with quick coat and I did go into one coat of epoxy. Granted, it was a super thin coat because now it was time to apply the decal and I didn't want any of the lines that we added creating any almost like bubbles or weird wrinkles with the name so the coat of epoxy really helped after the epoxy dried i cut out this name using the offset um the functionality in design space and i used the same textured vinyl as the background and then just a white vinyl over the top to really set off that name and I think it just came out beautifully because the white tied into the glitter that we applied so nicely. I will tell you I was out of white glitter so I used printable vinyl so that is what that white was that was coming off with the transfer tape but I still think it turned out absolutely great. It would not be one of my tutorials if I was not sealing my vinyl so that it prevented any lifting but I am just using a polyurethane sealer to make sure that all the vinyl is nice and laid down. The one I have in my hand is from CC DIY and is quick coat, but you can use any water-based polyurethane sealer and let that dry for about 45 minutes before you moved in to your final layers of epoxy. The final layers of epoxy, which this cup needed to, were just 15 milliliters of a little extra ink epoxy. I love this epoxy because it has the most resistance to yellowing, and since we have so much white on the cup, I thought that that was really, really important. But I just applied it, let it rotate for about four or five hours, moved into the second coat, and this baby was done. I hope this tutorial inspires you to create something amazing and maybe even give you the confidence to try a full water slide wrap. But I absolutely love the way this cup turned out and I'm gonna have to fight the urge to put cow print on everything because I'm kind of obsessed. Then when you pair it with the vertical stripes, I feel like you've got a winning combination that can be customized to anyone's style and color preferences. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. And as always, thank you for watching. It really means a lot to me. If you like this tutorial, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see future videos. You can also ring the bell so you are notified of all future cup making goodies. Thank you again, you guys. I love you. Bye.